Hey everybody, we're going to talk about installing WordPress on a local server on your machine but this time we're not going to do it by installing WAMP or MAMP uh, because it can be quite long winded. We're going to go and do a one click install with a, a particular piece of software. And the piece of software we're going to be using is called Desktop's Desktop Server and it's available from serverpress.com so if you go there and you go to downloads uh, and you have two versions here, you have the premium edition and you have the free limited edition. Now the premium edition has all the features uh, that allow you to install uh, WordPress kind of in a one click install. The limited free version limits you to three installations of WordPress or three websites. Uh, but to be honest with you, if you're developing WordPress sites you really only need one installation um, while you're developing it. Uh, so we'll go ahead and you can download this, you can download the Windows installer, I'm not going to take it through the install because it's pretty straightforward, uh, it's a standard install so download whatever version you want to uh, and once you get it downloaded then we'll look at some of the configuration. Now you will need to install it with administrator privileges and once you get that done you'll have your desktop shortcut, what you want to do is you want to right click and you want to open the file location. Now what the folder we're going to be looking for is send mail and inside in the send mail we're looking for a send mail any file so if you right click on that and you want to open with notepad what you want to do in here is we want to set it up so that we can send emails uh, from our server uh, through say if we put a contact form on our WordPress site. So these are the settings and they're kind of standardized for Gmail. Uh, I'm sure you can go ahead and you can find your own server settings depending on the mail uh, program that you use. But these are for Gmail uh, and pretty much these are the settings. You change your Gmail address, uh, again your Gmail address here and creatively enough your password. Uh, and once you change those to whatever your, say your uh, values are, file and save it. Once you save that then it means we'll be able to send email. So the next thing we have to look at now is actually turning on the server. So again we're going to need administrator privilege for this so you can right click on the shortcut and run as administrator. So once it starts up you can see there's two things here. The first thing it's going to ask you is it's going to ask you for firewall access. You can allow it to do that and save your answer. Uh, and then the next thing is you want to yes start Apache and MySQL services. So you click on next and it's going to set up all the services. So it's going to run through that. So once that's done you just click on next and you'll have three options. Well actually I you'll, you'll only have two. I have three for the time being because I have previous websites installed here. So the three options are to start or stop the server to remove or co copy or move an existing website or to create a new development site. Now the middle of those three won't be options for you on your first install because you won't have a copy or a website on it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create an, a new new development website. So just click on next and give it a, a name. So the, give it whatever name you, you feel like giving it. So I'm just going to call it YouTube. And we'll call it YouTuber, just to be funny. Uh, and again, it's going to give it that .dev suffix. Uh, you have two options here. You can install it as a WordPress, or you can install it as a blank non-WordPress site. So for this purpose of this, we're going to set it up as a WordPress. Now, I've changed the default directory to my own uh, custom directory. It's quite easy to do. You just browse to it here, uh, and then you click on Create. So it's going to create the source files for us. Now this is the longest part of it uh, because it has to go through, it has to set up the directories, it has to create all the little files, it has to uh, create the database and then create the tables within the database. And this can take up to a minute. Okay, so now that we have all of that done, we just click on Next and what it's done here is it's created a link for you to go and install WordPress. So you follow that link and it opens up your installation page and here you put in your details for creating your WordPress site. Okay so we've given these values and we've given it a password, a very weak one, but uh, and your email address here and this is where it's going to email the installation details to. So you just click on install WordPress, uh, it's a pretty quick install and that's it. You can log in with your chosen password. So we'll go ahead and log in just to prove it works. and there we are logged into WordPress and that's pretty much the installation side of it done but what we want to do is we want to go back and look at some of the features that are a part of this desktop server 
So we'll go back to our desktop server and we'll just click on next and it brings you back to the default page. Now this second option should be available for you now because we've created it. So what we do is select it and just click next and we can delete the previous, so I'm going to delete the previous server that I created. So you have three options here to copy the website, move the website or remove the website. So we just remove it, click yes and it goes ahead and it deletes the database, it deletes the files, the folders uh, and it's pretty into like it's gone once you delete that's it there's no residue left and once it's done then you just click on next and you're brought back to the splash screen again and the next thing we want to look at is the actual sites so if we click on this what it does is it brings us to a list of the websites that we have in place and this is kind of our default splash screen for our local host and if you click on this it'll actually bring you to the website that we created so we'll go back here again and in this one here you can go your MySQL administration or PSP My Admin. You can actually go into your admin and you can see uh, your databases. You can go in and change those and that's the one we just created. So that's pretty much it. Um, as I said already, there's two versions of it. There's a premium version and there's a free version. The premium version costs $99 and it's a, it's a subscription based uh, fee that you pay on an annual basis. Um, but there's so many add-ons to it and so many different tutorials in it as well that you can extend it with Dreamweaver and everything so that you can actually go in and you can edit your WordPress sites in Dreamweaver. Uh, so it might be worth it for $99 a year if you're doing a lot of development work it's probably worth it but if you're not doing a huge amount the three website rule is, is pretty straightforward. Uh, it's probably enough for most users. Uh, but as I said, if you go into your support section here, and there's plenty of tutorials on how to extend it, uh, but as I said, most of them are targeted at the commercial version of it. So that's it. So be sure to uh, drop us a like and subscribe and also comment. Uh, we love to hear your comments. Thanks for watching.